Hello once again, I'm Larry Ridley, and I'm pleased to have the members of my rhythm section of my group, the Jazz Legacy Ensemble. We have Greg Buford on the drums, and on the piano, Mr. Richard Wyans. And uh, I'm the bassist in the rhythm section with our group, but I'm going to put the focus on Greg and Richard to talk about playing in differing musical contexts. For if they're playing behind a singer, behind uh, uh, in a small group with a few horns or playing in a big band. So you want to get focus in on some of the concepts about what we have to do in terms of our total role as a rhythm section. Okay, so uh, uh, shall we start with you, R Richard? I've had a lot of experience playing with singers, big bands, small groups, trios, solo piano, everything. But I've found that uh, through the years playing with several vocalists. It all depends on the vocalist. Sometimes they want you to play a full chord piano, lots of soul work behind their singing. And that works out sometimes. Some singers don't like that. They want sparse playing, tinkling behind them. It all depends on the vocalist and their style. So as a pianist, I've had to adopt my playing according to their style and what they want. Now playing in a big band, sometimes the pianist doesn't have to play that much. There's so many instruments up there. You can take a little, it all depends on the band. If the pianist is the band leader, then that's a different story. He's featured more, so Count Basie, Duke Ellington, et cetera, and et cetera. In small groups, it's an individual thing. It all depends on the soloists and what they want. Sometimes they want you to comp heavy behind them, and uh, sometimes they don't. So it all depends. You have to learn how to play with each musician in a small group. Trio, I don't do much comping. Most pianists don't. Uh, the pianist is a featured artist. You have to learn how to play behind bass solos, and you don't play behind drum solos usually. It all depends. Now that's about the way I look at it. That's my interpretation of playing with various ensembles. One of the things that you're mentioning, Richard, too, I think that is important for the pianists and the rhythm section in general is to make sure that you don't get in the way and that you really have a complete and clear understanding of what the leader of the group wants you to do in terms of your role within the entire context. Now some people, it, and it depends on the style of jazz that you're playing too, because some, like if you're playing in a more free uh, environment, then you know everybody is sort of like a soloist all at once and accompanying each other at the same time too. So. But just understanding and really get to know what the leader of the group is wanting you to do in terms of fulfilling your role and function within the group. Now, Greg, at the drums, playing in a small group, like here we, we're the rhythm section playing in a trio format, and uh, would you just talk about what happens on the different levels when you're playing like with a trio versus a with a few horns on up to the big band. First responsibility for the drummer, I think, is, is to keep time and to make the music feel good. And hopefully if it feels good, the other musicians in the band will be more inspired to play. So for a trio, I, I would probably play uh, just a quieter version, keeping a nice texture under it. With the brushes. Yeah, with the brushes, and then, of course, I can go to the cymbal. I would like to, to talk about the bass drum, which a lot of people are forgetting. Usually, we, 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 we feather the bass drum very lightly. Now, that, that gets a little louder depending on the intensity of the band and, and the size of the band. And when we go to a big band, we may even be like this. Because we got to remember, most of the music was dance music. But always, I'll try to keep this bass drum under the bass. So I give the punctuation to the bass long notes. Then the cymbals are creating a texture of swing. I 
think very important in jazz music, you know, like, like in a language, there's an accent. So the accent for swing comes on two and four. One is not loud. Then the music has a little, a little tip to it, and people will start dancing and snapping their fingers as they're supposed to. And the groove is one of the main things that people have to... I, I think the groove is everything. You know, I've played with some people like Billy Taylor and Johnny Coles, and they always compliment that the music felt good. They never say how it sounded. It's, it was about feeling. So I come from the background, you know, especially if you play for a lot of dancers, it has to feel a certain way. Uh, th so feeling is the first thing for me. I'm looking to make it feel good. And if I can do that, the people that are playing with me uh, will hopefully will play better than they normally play. And I think each of us has to keep our, keep our individual ears open along with the collective aspects of, of how we have to well, blend you know, together. Well, you know, what, what I've learned more recently is, is it's the art of listening is more important than playing. Become a better listener. Exactly. Yeah, because context is very important. And, uh, you know, you hear some people who don't take the time to learn how to adjust because, and, and when you play with different bands and different people like singers are, instrumentalists, you know, they each have certain things that they like. And, and it's very important when you're playing in a group to really speak with the leader and the other members of the band so that everybody's on, it's like a team effort. That's, that's what's so important to emphasize. And if it's not a team, then uh, uh, I know Baby Dodds in a very famous uh, recording of him talking, he says, if, if you don't play with each other, sometimes you, know, you, uh, you might have an evil sounding band. Mm. And that was one of the things, I'm paraphrasing what he says on that Folkways recording, but that's something that some of the people looking and are aspiring musicians should listen to because it's applicable to all of the instruments. And with the bass, it's, uh, it's very important to understand not to always try to play a lot of notes. Now, there are different contexts. Now, if you're playing in a more avant-garde way, the leader or the musicians that you're involved with want you to be sort of, it's, it's almost like continuous chatter among each and every individual. But you have to always remember the musical context that you're working in because it's very, very important. Because I know a lot of people have lost jobs playing with certain people, mainly because they did not furnish the leader or the, you know, and singers, they really get on your case because some guys don't make the adjustment from playing behind horns to play with a singer, and sometimes they step all over the singer. And I've had many a singer, uh, I won't mention any names, that would turn around and use some very colorful language to let people in the rhythm section know that they weren't giving them what they need. Sometimes there are some musicians that don't want to bend and understand it, but thinking in terms of the team effort, working together and listening to each other, no one instrument is any more important than the other. And that's what makes a, a good sounding group and finding the groove together. That's, that's so important. We hope that we've given you a little insight into our particular concepts about how we feel about it and that you will keep on swinging.